I remember the date better than anyone else. For this day was the day that I met my demise. It was seemingly average to most, with the exclusion of a few. But to me, it was what changed my world and my perception of time. August 14th, 1874. I was the owner of a farm down south, a farm that made my wife and I a living. It was rather small, but it was enough. The days would be long and filled with labor, but it was home. I had a dog and three cats, who all did their part in hunting the mice, to which would be the fruit of their labors. It was a simple life, but it was my life. Later in our young marriage, my wife Mary and I had our first child. His name was Robert, to which we called him Rob. He was an intelligent young boy, showing a high potential in life at such a young age. He grew to be a strong young boy, to the age of 10, when this story takes place. My farm was old, and the buildings were dilapidated, for we had little money to spend other than for our living expenses. Bucket in hand, I started across the farm and to the cows, happily whistling an old tune. My heart rattled when I heard a creak. The silo above me was an eyesore, being one of the oldest buildings that still stood, and it was starting to give out. I made a note of it in my mind, and I continued down the dearth path and into the barn ahead. I tensed when I caught sight of Rob standing in front of the barn, awaiting me. What are you doing down here, son? I asked as I approached him. I opened the barn and I started towards one of the cows. Why, I was just walking around when I saw you skipping over. He let out a small laugh. My face reddened at the slightest. I ought to put you in your place for saying that. I remarked. Rob darted out of the barn like a bullet and ran to the neighboring buildings. I dropped the bucket and I started after him. I heard the creaking loud in it, and sure enough, Rob was running right in the silo's direction. I sprinted as fast as I could, but Rob was no easy kid to catch. I could hear him let out a playful laugh when I suddenly heard the roof give in. The top piece was raining down from the sky, casting a shadow overhead me. I was running faster than a grasshopper, so it would be no easy task to stop before the roof hit the ground. Luckily, Rob had already passed it and crashed to the floor out of breath. My shoes skid to the ground, making dust fly, and I had drifted too far into the range. The million ton piece had hit the ground, making my dust cloud seem like a cigarette smoke compared to the full cloud. My vision went dark. I didn't feel anything from the fall, strangely enough, and so I brushed myself off and I headed out of the ruins. What an anomaly, I thought to myself, as I ran out to tell Rob about my lack of injury. You're in a lot of trouble for letting me near my death like that. I jokingly yelled. Rob's expression didn't follow through with my comment though. It was like he hadn't heard me. Instead, he stared with the color drained from his face. I approached him, this time right near him. Son, I yelled. He was ignoring me, I thought. Rob ran in the direction of the house. I followed close behind, not feeling anything other than the wind. At the foot of the porch stairs, 
Rob had broken down like the silo and collapsed to the ground, head in arms, sobbing. I sat on the stairs next to him, and I put my hand on his shoulder. As I reached, my hand went straight through him. My heart stopped, and my brain went numb. Mary had walked out of the house, and straight through me as she saw the fallen silo top. It's horrible. Dad got crushed. Rob cried out. Mary's eyes teared up. Don't move out of this house, you hear. Get inside and make yourself comfortable. Mary said. Hello. I yelled. Neither of them had heard me. Mary ran to the ruins. I followed, jumping off the stairs. My eyes widened as I realized that I was still at the level of the stairs, flying. By concentration, I was able to move at an incredible speed. I passed Mary in a second, and I headed to the pile. I froze as I saw below the rubble was a large puddle of blood. It came true to me, all those legends and stories, for I had turned into none other than a ghost. The following days were heavy. I had no desire to eat or drink anymore, but my heart throbbed for love. I saw my own funeral, where my family cried themselves to the next day. I didn't feel tired but I sure wanted to rest all this emotion off, and so I fell asleep in the barn. When I awoke, the walls of her bedroom had chipped, and a musty smell hit me. I started out into the hallway, where it looked worn. I went to Rob's room to check on him, but his room was nothing more than empty. Startled, I went down the stairs to greet Mary, even though she couldn't hear me. I shook as I saw the wrinkles on her face. She was by the fireplace knitting. I saw a calendar on the mantel. It read, January 12th, 1890. Had I slept for 26 years? I went out and into the farm which looked rather healthy, even in the winter. I saw a man approach, followed by a woman. I yelled at Mary at the top of my voice, warning her of the strange visitors. But alas, she didn't hear me. The man walked in. The animals are healthy and taken care of, Ma. He said. Why was he calling my wife his mother? I suddenly came to the realization that it was Rob, and the woman following him was his wife. I wish Pops was still around. Oh, how I miss him dearly. He'd be proud of my work here, he said delicately. A tear formed in my eye. I wanted to tell him that I was still here, but they would never be able to hear me. I knew that I didn't want to be here anymore. I closed my eyes and I drifted into sleep. I awoke to darkness. The musty smell was very clear now. The floorboards were broken, the wall paint was nearly gone, and the items in the house were gone too. My heart raised. I flew out of the house and onto the field where all the buildings were covered in ivy. I smelled something strange, yet satisfying to my nose. I flew up ahead where I saw a large strip of hard gray rock. Moving objects with wheels raced by incredibly fast. I followed the strip endlessly until I came across to Tom with the objects all over it. Where was Mary? Where was Rob? I looked up at the church where the sign read, August 14th, 1919. 
I had been gone for 45 years. I wanted to see Rob more than anything right now. Perhaps now I could finally talk to him. As my desire grew, I was brought to him. My body flew for what seemed like forever at top speed until I came upon his house. Inside was an old man and his wife. The old man was pouring himself a glass of tea, and the woman was knitting by the fire, just as Mary did in 1890. I kept trying to reach for objects to get their attention, but my hands went through everything. A knocking shook the door. The woman opened the door to reveal two small children. They must have been Rob's grandchildren, which means Mary must have passed away by now. As they greeted each other, I closed my eyes, wanting to get out of this place as fast as I could. I awoke in the house, but I quickly flew out and onto the street, where the objects were everywhere. I found the church, which looked brand new. The clock read, June 11th, 1955. On the gray strip were several more objects passed, this time a dark green. There were a bunch of soldiers on the top of it, with the strangest uniforms that I had ever seen. This time, I decided to learn about the future. I wanted to know what all this was, and so I stayed around the city for a long time. It was not until a year after that I knew what cars and roads were and that telephones were these magical devices that allow you to talk to somebody from far away. A TV was a machine that allowed you a window into other people's lives. It was all so stunning to me. Here I was, still in my overalls, while everybody else wore suits and ties. It was 1956 when I decided to finally go into the house. There were a few adults and kids there, all of which I didn't know. I knew for certain that Rob was dead, and that his kids had become old, and his kids' kids had become old. By this time, I figured my great-grandchildren were alive. It haunted me, but I wanted to go ahead. I closed my eyes and I drifted to sleep. I awoke to hear the sound of cars everywhere, I flew out of the house to see the roads and buildings were much taller. People were walking around on the streets, some holding an object to the ear and talking. This, my friends, is the time that I am in now. The clock read, July 16th, 2012. People were tapping these rectangles. The cars that passed by were nearly silent, and the buildings were glassy. And so, just as I did in 1955, I learned. I learned what smartphones were in the world of technology and computers. I learned until my mind was filled with this new era of life. It was January of 2019 when I finally realized all there was. It took me years to learn, and I was now completely familiar by this time, I visited my family, and I saw that I was a great-great-great-great-great-grandfather since my children had children young. It was a normal day when, all of a sudden, I was able to successfully grab something. That something is the phone that I'm using right now. I wanted others to know about my adventure through time, and how it was to learn of your children's 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 children. After typing as far as I did, I had heard a voice. This voice was to me. After all this time, all of these eras, someone had finally reached me. Even when learning, I had pains and I suffered the misery of no communication. It was a hard life, but I had gotten used to it. I knew that I would always miss my child and wife but I had come to accept that. 
This voice lit a spark in my brain that hadn't been lit in 145 years. I listened to what it said. It offered me my life in 1874, at the cost of me remembering all I do now, and the fact that nobody would believe me if I were to say anything about these times. I thought carefully and I realized that I had no future here. As soon as I hit post, I will finally be transported back to my time, where I will live the rest of my years as if nothing had happened. The voice said that I would stop just before the silo hit the ground. Thank you for listening. Best luck to all of you in this time.